Hello everybody and welcome to our second video for problem 15-1c. Here we're going to finish up where we, where we left off from the first video. So in that first video we went through and we completed this um, a little bit smaller uh, partial Excel regression output. Again, we had a different starting point, a different path to completion. And that brought us down to having our estimated regression equation, which we have here is y hat equal to 199.73 plus 34.49 age plus 14.9 experience. So that was our estimated regression equation that relates a person's salary to how many years of experience they have and how old are they. So moving on from that, our R squared. So for part B, we have an R squared of 0.8. Again, there's different qualities of interpretations. A common one is to say our independent variables explain 80% of the variation in our dependent variable. I always prefer more detail than that. Always be interpreting within the context of the problem. So here I would say the amount of experience a person has combined with their age explains 80% of the variation in their salary. Okay, so I'm interpreting that number. I'm interpreting that R squared, oops, specifically in the context of our problem, talking about the variables that are in our model. Moving on, C and D, interpret the p-values and the intervals, and D, discuss the results of the tests, uh, individual tests, while those two C and D are very much related. So let's do those together. We're not interpreting our, inter our, our coefficients. Why? Well, when I look at those p-values, when I look at those confidence intervals, nothing is found to be statistically significant. The intercept is not statistically different from zero, but that's fine. That just means that the, the line that we've estimated crosses through the origin. I'm not too worried about that. What I'm interested in is whether or not there exists a relationship between age and salary, experience and salary. And what these results are telling me, those p-values, remember what those tests are, that null and alternative hypotheses for the t-tests are testing, are they individually different from zero? And in both cases, I'm not rejecting. Beta 1 is not statistically different from 0, right? Beta 1 is not statistically different from 0, and beta 2 is not statistically different from 0. And that's confirmed when I look at those confidence intervals. They both have a negative lower limit, they both have a positive upper limit, in both cases a 0 exists within them, what does it mean when our hypothesized value lies within that confidence interval? Well, that is consistent with a failure to reject the null hypotheses. So in all of these cases, looking at those individual parameters, nothing is significant. Now, why am I emphasizing that so much? Because look at this one. That F test is showing us that together our coefficients are statistically different from zero. Remember what that test looks like. That null is that beta one is equal to beta two is equal to zero. Now, if we just looked at the results from our t-test that said beta one is zero, beta two is zero, and then we look at the null for the f-test, well, we would expect not to reject based on what we just saw in our t-tests. But here, for the F-tests, we absolutely reject, which means that we have evidence to support the alternative, which is that not all of them are zero. So here we have a little bit of conflict. It appears as though the results of the F-test are 
telling us something different from what we're getting in those t-tests. So it's important to remember what each of these tests are testing. The t-tests are tests for individual parameter significance, which means given what the other variables have to contribute in explaining the dependent variable. Does this one contribute anything unique? And in terms of age, the answer is no. Given what experience has to contribute in explaining the person's salary, age has nothing further to contribute. And similarly, the test on experience, given what age has to contribute in explaining somebody's salary, experience has nothing additional to contribute. This is saying, when we look at that F test, together they are explaining a statistically significant amount of the variation in salary. So what's going on here? So just to tick these off, we've gone through, we've talked about parts C and parts D. So now let's get into this discussion on part E. So what we see here is a big red flag for the possible presence of multicollinearity. The fact that we have individual coefficients that are not statistically significant, yet somehow together they are statistically significant, that tells us that these two independent variables are probably explaining the same variation. They're probably overlapping each other quite significantly. And when we look at these variables, again, our intuition might tell us, oh yeah, a person's age and the amount of experience they have I can see how those might be related to one another. And so what we're seeing here is that once more, if I look at, you know, if this represents SST, that distance, that represents the total amount of variation that exists in our dependent variable. Well, what's likely happening is that I have two variables. Here's age, and here is, uh, what color do I want, blue, and here's experience. Now, if we look at these together, age and experience, well, in terms of how much of SST they are capturing, they're capturing a significant amount of SST. So when we look at that F test, that is testing whether or not they are together significant. Well, certainly in my little diagram, I can see, oh, absolutely, together, age and experience, they're capturing a significant amount of SST. So that's why our p-value here is small. But then when we look at these individually, and I look at the coefficient on age, is it equal to zero, yes or no? And then I look at the test on experience, and I wonder, is it statistically different from zero, yes or no? Well, now we're looking at, given what age has to contribute, does experience contribute anything more? Well, I would say, you know, if I look at maybe from here to here, not, you know, it's a little bit, but it certainly is not very much that experience has to contribute unique to what age is already capturing. So we say, no, it's, it's not statistically significant. That p-value, I forget what it is, that p-value is large, right? Given what age is already explaining, experience is only capturing, you know, something insignificant. And similarly, given what experience is already capturing, is age contributing anything unique? Well, age is only capturing maybe from there to there that is unique. Given what experience is already explaining, 
age is really not contributing much at all. So it is not statistically different from zero. So here we have this problem with multicollinearity. And certainly when we see these kinds of conflicting results between the F and the, and the T test, that's a big red flag. And so what might we do? Well, if I want to confirm the presence of multicollinearity, I might be inclined to run what is called a diagnostic regression. And so here I have this diagnostic regression that says, you know, probably a person's experience is related to how old they are. And I'm setting it up this way because a person's age is not reliant on how much experience they have, but their experience is reliant on how much age. So that's why I've chosen to set up experience as my dependent variable and age as that independent variable. So I run this through Excel. I see an extremely high level of correlation between those two variables. I have a p-value here that is tiny. Everything here is pointing to the fact that these two variables are highly correlated with each other. So what do I do? I remove one. And here I am keeping age in my model because once more age here has the lower p-value. So I'm getting rid of experience that has a higher p-value. Whatever experience has to contribute in explaining salary, age is picking up that same information. So I don't need experience in there because age is capturing that same information. So I have my diagnostic that has confirmed that correlation between them. I run my revised model where now I have salary as a function only of age. So now I have really a simple linear regression like we had in module 14. I look at my R squared, my adjusted R squared, they're both at 0.8. How do those compare with my original model? Well, I can come up here and here I can see, well, the R squared is the same. My adjusted R squared has actually improved. So removing that model, my adjusted R square has gone up. So that confirms again that by removing that model, we have improved on our, um, on our model. By removing that variable, we have improved our model. So that we have this revised equation. Everything is significant. We have our estimated equation is 12.55 plus 50.23 age. Our R squared is 0.8. This tells us that the person's age captures 80% of the variation in their salary. Don't forget that dependent variable, that was salary, measured in thousands of dollars. Age is their age measured in years. Here when we look at these uh, p-values, I see, okay, this is significant. I can interpret these this coefficient in a somewhat more meaningful manner because now it's all statistically significant. So each additional year in age, each additional year older, that contributes an increase of 50.23 thousand dollars to salary. So fifty thousand two hundred and thirty dollars more in salary for each additional year older that they are. Okay, so that's that marginal effect. For each additional year older, average salary increases by, this is 50.23 Salaries in thousands, so that's fifty point two three thousand, so that's fifty thousand two hundred and thirty dollars. Each additional year older increases average salary by fifty thousand two hundred and thirty dollars. Okay, that interval 
I'm 95% confident that for each additional year older you are in age, average salary increases by between $40,610 up to $59,840. Sorry, $59,840. I'll say that again because I know sometimes these are a little bit tricky. I'm 95% confident that for each additional year in age that you are, Average salary increases by between $40,610 up to $59,840. So that's our interval. And finally, let's see part D, discuss the results of the tests. We've basically already talked about that. Our p-value is zero. This is a a simple linear regression. So our p-value in the f-test is exactly zero. Uh, exactly the same. I shouldn't say exactly zero. It's exactly the same. There'll be a non-zero value somewhere in there. And certainly we see that relationship between our t and our f as we did in simple linear because 10.7 squared is equal to 114. So everything that we saw in module 14, we see that here. Okay, so that's about it for this discussion on, um, well, for this introductory discussion on multiple linear regression, and we've incorporated a little bit of a talk here on multicollinearity. Next videos, we'll look at something a little bit different that we can now do within this multiple linear regression framework. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.